Consequence Podcast Network. What is going on? We are back. What's Rome up, and Duddy Show. Episode 28. Uh, that's what I'm going to go with. Episode 28. It's been confirmed. Yep. It's been confirmed. We are back home from our tours, respectively. Yep. And wow. getting ready to go back out on another one. Yeah. We, we got some, some, uh, some time in between that. We'll... We'll get to that. Um, yeah, we'll no. get to that. But yeah, if you are listening to this, then we announced the Roman Duddy tour a few days ago. Yeah. If you if you're listening to this the day it drops. But yeah, today actually we are going to be announcing the tour today, the day we were recording this episode. But it probably won't air for a few days. So yeah, that's exciting. Yep. So uh, I think by now the tickets are available at RomanDuddy.com. Starts November 27th and goes through to uh, December 17th. It's going to be awesome, man. We got a full band on this one, old new sound and, and uh, just like a whole new musical experience. I don't think anyone's kind of, uh, you know, ready for it. So it's yeah. going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. I really, really am excited for this one. And I hope to see all you guys out there at the shows. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Oh. I just got off the road with Incubus. That was an incredible tour. Shout out to all the Incubus crew and band guys. It's funny because like, you know, we were on this crazy run you know huge like you know v- venues and like they, they have like crazy lights and production and everything and then we got off the road with incubus and we had like four days off at home and then we're kind of doing some like one-off stuff for the next couple of weeks where we go and like play on the weekends and then come back home and the very first show could not be any further away from the spectrum of our summer tour with Incubus. I mean, it was a great show because they're like backyard parties, right? Yeah. But it was like, our crew had like a treacherous time, dude. It was like <laughs> 110 degrees in Texas. The sun was like beating down on all them and like the local stage crew set up all the gear wrong and it took them like five hours and we didn't get a sound check. And then oh. it, was, it was just like, what's that Murphy's Law? I think it's yeah. when, uh, you know, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. It's exactly what happened. No dressing rooms. We're all just like, you know, stuck. Hey, dude, insane. It was like in a dome out in the middle of the desert. Crazy. No dressing rooms. No. no. So did you, you guys just had to sit at the hotel all day? Yeah. Back so and forth. We had to go back and forth. We went there for sound check and yeah. that didn't happen. But anyway, of course, those kind of things always make for rager shows. It was exactly. a rager show, like insane show. You know, you got to go through the bullshit to get to the good. But man, it was a... Uh, it was definitely a contrast from summer, so. I'm, I'm <laughs> you need those to remind you, you know? Dude, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, my God. Well, shoot. I mean, that's, you know, that, that's how the Roman Daddy tour is going to be. You know, like, uh, we're going to yep. be playing a lot smaller venues than we're used to. Going back, playing venues that we both probably haven't played at in years. But I, I'm, like, really looking forward to it. Our pace it's is different, so dude. Like, phonically and, like, the music that we're about to drop and everything. Like, it just moves at a different pace than, like, I think both of our bands, you know? Yeah. Because we're starting this up and it's very organic still. And we're just building everything, like, brick by brick right now. So... It's moving at a at just a different pace. That is, it's it's enjoyable, you know. Yeah. So, like on our last tour that we went on, we were able to like, for me, I was able to take in so much more of like the places that we were touring. Yeah, because of the fact that we weren't tucked away in a huge venue in an amphitheater or something. Yeah. We were doing like theaters downtown in the city and stuff. And, yeah, you know, like, we didn't have a crazy day of stuff and press and all that. So it was just kind of like. I don't know. We got to just do whatever. Out and, like get to explore a little more. You guys just want to go walk around. That never <laughs> happens. Yeah. That never happens. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that for sure. You know? Oh, man. But, um, yeah, no, man, it's, it, it's been awesome. And now that we're home, like we said last week, you know, to everybody listening, we can kind of buckle down and get a little bit more of a reoccurring schedule for the podcast. It's definitely difficult when we're all like traveling and yeah. different venues without Wi-Fi and some do and sound checks going on that are stepping over the audio, like you name it. That's kind of how it goes with tour. But now that we're home, we're, we're definitely going to be able to lock in a little bit more on a, on a schedule. And yeah, we got a lot of awesome stuff coming for you guys. So you'll be we here. Do. We've got some new fun segments. We have a, we have kind of a new plan, what we're going to do for the T-Gats. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about that. 
Yeah, we're going we're gonna to start the TGATs back up in October, the Great American Talent Show. You guys send us your demos or your videos or whatever it is of your bands or whatever talent you have. And uh, we play them on the show and we let you guys vote. And what we're going to start doing in October is we're going to pick 10 of them that just live on the Facebook group page, the poll. They're going to live... They're going to live on there for the whole month, these 10 submissions. And throughout the month, it's just going to be a battle. And who's and you know, they're going to battle out for the whole month. We'll be able to talk about it on each episode and let everyone know what's going on. So it's going to be a lot more fun and a lot easier for us to keep track of. Uh, yeah. Of and the winner will we'll feature in the credits of the last episode of the month. Yep. The battle of the bands begins. So if you want to be part of that Send your submissions to the Rome and Daddy Show at gmail.com. We will yeah, check it out. We're, we're pretty much owning the fact that like we get 99% like band submissions. Send us your band yeah. stuff. Still send us your band stuff, baby. Come on, send it on in. We're looking yep. for it. The Rome yep. and Daddy Show at gmail.com. Yeah. But yeah, man. So we we got we've gotten a bunch. So the new segment that we're introducing today, horror stories. This week's topic of horror stories is uh concert horror stories. You guys flooded the inbox in with so many stories. So we're really <laughs> sorry if we didn't get to it. We did go through like probably like a hundred. We grabbed like some really awesome ones. So thank you guys for submitting. Um, we're going to be asking you guys to submit some other horror stories as we move along through the podcast because it is a new segment. So uh, yeah, we're, we're excited for that. But let's get into some questions. Let's we? do a couple of Q&As and then, yeah. and then let's get into some of these horror stories. I'm with it. I'm with it. From Jenica Holly, what is one of your favorite memories as a dad? Oh, man. That's a tough one off the top. I would yeah. say one of my favorite memories as a dad would be um, like the first time I ever flew my son to a festival and like brought him on stage for the very first time. Like that was like all in one experience. That was for sure like experience I'll never forget. Duddy has all of his core memories written down on his laptop, so he's just searching through the file. I was searching. Uh, I, I just googled um, "good memories with kids," <laughs> and I'm gonna. <laughs> Duddy's as fuck, dude. Uh, we no. went to the fair, and I got. <laughs> <laughs> I played catch with my son yeah. <laughs> three times. <laughs> um, Watching them, you know, succeed at something, you know, like for instance, with Jack, you know, I remember his first day at jujitsu and he went in there and he had no idea what he was doing. Now he's doing tournaments and he's so comfortable with it and just seeing them grow at things, you know, and, and become who they are. And just same with Sophia, you know, I remember her first lesson on a horse and she was scared and the horses intimidated her. Now she's whipping those things around the stables like it's nothing, you know? So I think those are just some of the coolest parts of being a dad, just watching your kids grow and watching them like succeed. Yeah, my, my kids are, are still learning how to wipe their ass. So we're going to have gotten <laughs> to that stage yet, but I can't wait. Yeah. Let's take another one and then we'll jump into some horror stories. Oh. From Jason Thomas, you each play acoustic and electric. What's your preference? Um, personally, I, I prefer to play electric, but you know, that, that's just because it, it's, it's fun for me. That's how I started. Um, I'm more, I'm def probably more of acoustic. You know, I like, I love playing both, but I like to just grab an acoustic and just like chill in the backyard or something like that. It's, it's super easy. Yeah. For me, acoustic. Well, I, I love acoustic too. Cause that's, that's how I like, you know, oh, no, that's no, no, how I get no, to play no. more. You already no, said electric. Dude, no, that's fucked yeah, up. You can't say, say that. <laughs> Yo, before we jump into horror stories, I, I want to talk about an experiment that I did this what? summer. What? I did an experiment. Okay. Our gummies are back in stock. The yes. good kinds of gummies. And, you know, we have the different ones with C B N, C B D, and THC. So I experimented with our orange glads. Three gummies in the morning. And bro, it was the fucking greatest thing. I swear to God, like this isn't like some like salesman bullshit. Like it really changed the way that I would like wake up in the morning. It was like a different kind of cup of coffee. And yeah. I had my cup of coffee, but I was much more uh, positive, much more clear, not messed up in any type of way. But I just like really felt just like a much more pleasant person. I feel to other people. Yeah. And I'm already a pretty chipper guy, but I just really felt like uh, just more in the moment and more like focused. And dude, I, I can't profess enough how awesome these are. So I want to tell everybody they are in stock now. RomanDuddyCBD.com. 
You can grab them and a couple other flavors that we have. Snoozeberry is awesome. Love them, man. Dude, you're totally right. And my wife, uh, she called me while we were on tour and she's like, babe, I love these freaking gummies. She was doing the same thing, the orangey glads, right? When she would wake up and she was like, I don't know what it is. I just, I feel great all day after I started taking these. And I think I mentioned everyone on the show before, but the snoozeberries, our bus, everyone was loving the snoozeberries. If you have yeah. trouble sleeping, eat one or two of these and you're going to get a good night's sleep. And they taste delicious. It's crazy. Yeah. So go check them out. Leave a review, please, please. If you uh, have had them and, and you love them, leave a review. If you have them and you don't like them, uh, leave a review. But yes, please check them out. If you are a consumer of cannabis therapy. All right, guys. Boom. Do it. Should we get into this horror story segment? Oh, yeah. What's going on, guys? We are super excited to play this story for you right now. Our buddy, Kevin Bavona from The Interrupters, just sent the story into us. It takes place back in 2014, and it's pretty freaking gnarly. Go check them out right now. They are on tour with The Skins and with Flogging Molly. They got a new record and a banging single out. Everybody, go check out The Interrupters. Hey, this is Kevin from The Interrupters with an edition of Tour Horror Stories. For this story, I'm going to take you back to the year 2014, in the early days of us van touring. Now, on this particular tour, we were going from Vancouver, Canada, all the way across Canada to the East Coast, and then down to Florida, and then back to California. So it was a very long one. And on this particular tour, I would say we were partying a lot. And on this particular night, maybe we partied too hard. So we played in North Carolina. We were about halfway through the tour and we were playing in a place called Cat's Cradle. And after the show, we were all drinking and having a crazy night. And I went to our van and I saw our singer, Amy. She was in the front seat of the van. She was having what appeared to be a pretty gnarly panic attack. It was hyperventilating. And I said, hey, hey, what's wrong? And she said, I'm dying and I need to go to the hospital. There just happened to be a taxi cab in that parking lot. So we hop in the taxi cab and we say, take us to the hospital. So we go to the hospital and at this point, we're probably talking three in the morning. They take a look at her and they say, you're severely dehydrated and we need to get some fluids in you. So they hook her up to some IVs and we're at the hospital for a couple hours while she's getting fluids. Now at the time, we were both cigarette smokers and since have quit but at this time two hours in a hospital was a long time to go without a cigarette so when they finished up her second bag of fluids she was like i have to go have a cigarette let's go outside so we start walking outside of the hospital and i noticed that we're kind of being chased by hospital personnel now mind you we are still hammered and it's probably like 4.35 in the morning at this point. The sun is starting to show its face. And when I look back at the hospital personnel chasing us, I notice this very dark trail of blood that's been following us all the way to the lobby of the hospital. When they bandaged up Amy's arm for the IV, they didn't do a very good job and she was bleeding profusely. Now, in my drunken state, I thought it'd be a good idea to grab this roll of paper towels I found in the lobby and start wiping up the blood. But all I really did is smear it around. And the hospital people were like, you have to come back. We have to bandage you up. And she was like, OK, fine. So they bandage her up. We go outside of the hospital and by now it's daylight and we realized we're on a university campus and people are starting to get up and go to class. So we have a cigarette and then I pull out my cell phone to figure out how we're going to get back to our hotel. And just at that moment, my phone dies. And then I look at her phone and her phone is dead. So neither of us have a cell phone. She's covered in dry blood. We're both still drunk from the night before. And all I have in my pockets is a hundred dollar bill. So we're walking around this university campus with all these bright eyed and bushy tailed students getting ready to go to class. And I just start walking up to kids saying, hey, can I use your cell phone? And everybody's looking at us like we're absolutely insane. And they're like, no, 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 please don't talk to us. And eventually I pull out the hundred dollar bill and I start going up to kids, college age kids and saying, I will give you $100 if I could just call a cab. Every single one of them said no. And at this point, we're getting desperate. Now the sun's up. There's kids everywhere. We've walked around this college campus asking countless kids if we could just use their cell phone to get a cab to go back to the venue. But 
Understandably, we looked insane, covered in blood, hammered from the night before, been up all night, totally haggard. And, you know, it wasn't really working in our favor at that point. So we found a bus stop that the bus that was taking kids from like, you know, class to class was finally this bus stopped. And I go up to the bus driver and I'm like, hey, how much is it to ride the bus? He goes, you have to be a student. And I said, well, I have a hundred dollar bill. And he goes, what, what are you looking for? And I'm like, I just need to charge my phone so I could call a cab and get out of here. He goes, you know what? I'll take you to the university library. They got phone charges in there. So we get on this bus and we take a journey to the university library. And sure enough, there's phone chargers in there. I plug in my phone and charge it. And just when it gets enough charge, we call a cab and we try to get back to our hotel that the band was staying at that night. Now our phones are dead. We haven't talked to anybody in our band. And now it's like probably seven in the morning fully sunny outside we've been up all night and we are not feeling our best finally the cab shows up we get in the cab takes us to the hotel we get there we walk into our hotel room where the rest of the band is sleeping my brothers are on one bed and our merch guys on the floor and there's our bed just waiting for us we crawl into bed and just as soon as we shut our eyes my brother's alarm goes off and they wake up and say all right we got to get to the next town They have no idea what we had been through the night before, but it was definitely a tour horror story. And that whole van ride, we napped. And then we told them what happened. And were they shocked? Mm, At this time, not really. But that was one night I definitely don't want to ever repeat. This has been Kevin from The Interrupters with an edition of Tour Horror Stories. This one is from Mikey America Polinski. I'm not sure if I would consider this a disaster, but in April 2018, I was seeing All Time Low in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I had just turned 11. And in the middle of the show, I went to the bathroom and the lady was literally in active labor in the middle of the bathroom during the show. I remember it because the irony of choking on a lifesaver was playing. That song will never be the same to me. Dude, I don't know what I would do if I saw a woman go. First of all, I I can't even like imagine like touching the floor of a bathroom at a concert. concert. Let alone just, I mean, do you have to be so sterile inside of like, you know. The first thing that that baby touched was the floor of a bathroom. Oh, no. (laughs) It's first, it's first fucking moment. It was just like, oh, fuck. Dude, for sure you're catching something, staff. Oh, my God. Something. Oh, man. Well, God bless you. That's a horror story. While you're on stage performing, somebody could be giving birth in the bathroom. I saw a guy shit his, this was not when I was in a band. This is when I, I used to work at a mall. I was, I was going to go use the restroom in the mall. And I saw this like older Indian gentleman. He was holding his back, his, the back of his pants running inside of the bathroom, running to a stall. And it looked like he was going to make it because he was only like three feet away. But there oh, was no. shit, shit oh. spilling out of the bottom of his pant onto the floor. And oh. I looked down and there's a puddle and he slipped and fell into it in the bathroom into his own shit dude i just walked out man i was gonna let him deal with that you know that that wasn't you gotta walk out you gotta let him i don't don't want nothing to do with it let him be i don't want like even if he would have like broke his neck i wouldn't want to be the guy to like have to you know then it's unfortunate he's just gonna have to deal with he has a broken neck now you know (laughs) i mean yeah dude he could it, fate was in my hands and I chose to walk yeah. away at that point. Yeah. I can't do it. You got to be careful with public restrooms, you know? I, wow, this was a shit story. Who would have knew? Yeah. This and this is why, story. you know, this is why they say don't, don't run in the, in the bathroom. Next week, we need a shit story. A horror shit story. <laughs> oh my God. I've heard so many of those. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys used to have this segment. Okay. This one comes from uh, Sophia Chrissa. I was at a Dave Matthews concert on a first date and the lady oh, behind me... Oh, that's crazy! That's oh. wild! What? What a story. Oh, that oh, Dave Matthews concert? God, <laughs> <laughs> on a first date and the lady behind me dropped her french fries, drenched in ketchup directly onto my head. There was so much ketchup in my hair. She offered me and my date a hit from her joint and that was that. 
Huh. Well, you All know. Right. All right. I mean, that's that shit happens, you know. You got ketchup in your hair. You have long hair. You could probably speak on that. Oh, trust me, I would be super bummed out if someone just smashed a bunch of ketchup into my hair and I was at a concert. That's like a bath. Because then what do you what do you do? You you like you gotta go to the bathroom. Now you're in the bathroom sink at a concert trying to wash your oh I, I think I told you on the show, maybe I didn't, but did I tell you about when we saw the guy just puke amongst the crowd? At, oh god, we were at uh I don't think so. Shit, man. We were at some festival. I, f- I forget the festival, but it was one of those lucky moments where your bus is parked like right up by the fence and you can and you're just looking at the crowd of the festival all day long. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah totally. People watching. You people like, watching. People watching. You're just looking at the crowd the entire day. A hundred percent. I love it. And that. we were watching and we saw this group of dudes, and it was like you're you're total basic group of dudes that were just partying and having a good time, but like collegey fratty guys, shirt shirts off backwards hats. Oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, fucking chests out a little bit, you know, whatever. They're having a good time, but they're Peeled up, ready to go. Yeah. They're they're. I'm sure one of them's going to get on the, one of the other one's shoulders at, at some point and they're going to walk through the crowd and it's annoy everyone, but, um, the mountain dew chariot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys are doing their thing and they're having a good time. And one of the guys you can just tell is getting pretty fucking hammered as the day goes. And at one point, like his buddies, you can tell he's, he's kind of being held up now. You know, they're, they're still partying, you know, like they're doing their thing and like everyone, but like, he's like, kind of just like, you know, and, and, and we're watching him and we're like, dude, this guy's, he's barely holding on. Like he's <laughs> fighting back some demons right now that need to come out. Like he is going to throw, he's going to throw up, you know, and he's a big, he's like a tall, big guy. So he's above the most everyone else in the crowd and he's just up. And then, you know, where it's going, dude, it got, he just went, his hands are out with, over his buddy's shoulders, and he just goes up, oh. in the air, up like and out, and it just goes Goosh. like people don't even know, huh? Big frat guy that had been crushing beers all day, so like a Pizza. lot, it was a lot of puke, and it just went woof over the crowd like a blanket of fucking Dude, puke. That's and, my freaking nightmare yeah and some people like everyone turned around and like there was definitely a handful of people that realized they just got puked on but like a lot of people you know they think like someone just like spilled some beer or something you know that's my nightmare they just think like oh i got some beer and on like, oh, like, no, whatever you, know? you have puke on you dude oh, oh. oh. can't do bodily fluids I, that's walk away i can't How do that bodily now? fluids catch up all day long did douse me and catch up and mail, light me on uh, fire, but do not, do not pee on me, do not see on me, do not poop on me. No, no, do not definitely throw up no poop. Me. Definitely not throw up. Yeah. So, what's uh, your down for pee or what? No, I'm definitely no pee. Down for a little bit of pee and see no, no. or what? I mean, if it if it had to be one of the three, white pee? <laughs> <laughs> if it had to be anyone, any one of them. I don't know, man. I don't know what that would be. I don't know if I really want some hot piss on my back, you know? Or what would you rather have? Puke, poop, or pee on you? <laughs> this is fucked up. Your family's in danger. You <laughs> no, have why to you choose one. Family? Why are you putting kids into the shit? Oh, man. <laughs> this is like a, a sick, sick version of like, you know, the fucking Saw, Saw 10. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and choose pee, yeah. Yeah, it would be P. Barf is just not, nah, dude. I can't do that in poop, obviously. Great question. I got another one here. This one is from Katie Bredson. I won tickets to see Sublime with Rome at Marymore Park in Seattle through a radio station. A day later, I found out I also won backstage passes to meet them and 311. I was so stoked. Maybe a little too excited. We car barred the whole way there. About 10 minutes from the venue, I had to pee so badly, my boyfriend pulled over for me to pop a squat. I ran up a steep hill to find a private spot. (laughs) Well, the drinks kicked in and I rolled down the hill full of sticker bushes. My legs were all cut up. It was a disaster. I missed meeting Sublime with Rome, which is who I was mainly going to see. I didn't 
I did get to meet 311 and the rest of the concert was amazing, but still made mad at myself. And I've seen Sublime with Rome four times since then. Man. Wow. You're a great fan. Thank you. I'm sorry you fell down a mountain. Wow. That sucks. I could just picture that. And you could just picture the boyfriend going, oh, no, babe. No. We're for sure going to be late. Oh, every time. Just texting your homie. Just, just go in without us. Oh, yeah. She it. fell through the sticker bushes again. And you can't even be mad, you know, because she's like wounded, you know, she's yeah. like bleeding in the back of the car. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know, ah. you, you gotta you gotta love the merit. You well, know? Thank you for sharing that story with us. That's actually really funny. Absolutely. I'm glad it didn't. It could have been a lot worse, it sounds like. Yeah. A couple cuts and scrapes. You'll be all good. I had an audio one. This one is kind of gnarly. This one comes from Carrington Donahue. This is really funny. So one time, I'm 18 now. I think I was about 14 years old. She's not 18. Uh, the Offspring was opening for Sublime with Rome at San Diego's Cal Coast Credit Union. And it was in between the Offspring had just finished playing and I was trying to make my way to the front as a normal child does. Um, long story short, this guy is like grabbing me. He punches my father. And what? My father falls down, immediately dislocates his shoulder. No! The guy hit him in the eyebrow, and the guy is just pounding on my father. And yeah, then my dad had to be rushed to the hospital. I stayed for the concert, though. So that was cool. Whoa! What? Whoa! And then she backs out. She wow. stayed for the concert? But who was playing? Offspring and Sublime with Rome. No, no, no. Who was playing during the I, if I I, I for sure would have saw that. Someone just getting mauled in the front. I wonder if, if she said, and, wow, that's unbelievable. Oh, man. Well, you know what? Send me a DM. Send, send a DM to the page or send an email, and we'll get your information, and we'll hook you up with tickets to our uh, next show. Because that's fucking wild, man. I'm really sorry. Yeah, how to get beat up like that. That's attacked, assaulted. Yeah, wow. so that's exactly what she wants, Rome, is tickets to come back to see you guys again. You know what? It's, it, so she can get a it. rough band. You know, they're <laughs> with a real rough crowd. Oh, drink. my goodness gracious. That would never happen at a 311. It's a violence or, or a dirty head. No way. No way. Yeah, that's a concert horror story right there, folks. That's a concert horror story. Holy <sighs> moly. Thank you guys so much for submitting in the horror stories for the week. Um, those are definitely some some bad ones, uh, but we'll have some other horror stories for next week's episode. We want to keep. Yeah. Yeah. Next episode, actually send us horror stories of like going out to eat, like horror Ooh. stories of, of like at a restaurant, something Love like that. that. Yeah. Send in your horror stories or restaurant horror stories or barbecue horror stories or whatever. Something. Uh, Send them to the Roman Duddy Show at gmail.com or send them via DM, uh, Instagram. We will get to them. We, we wanted to uh, talk about real quick, guys, that we are going on tour. Tickets are on sale now. You can head over to romandaddy.com to grab them. It's a national tour. We're going from coast to coast. And it's about a month long, so we'd love to see you guys so with a full band, a brand new sound you've never heard. We're dropping a single, I believe, in the top of October. It's, it's the first taste into the project. Some of you super diehard fans have already kind of heard us playing around with the song and, and using it here or there. Uh, the song is Cannabis Tree, and we can't wait to, to show for you guys. It's definitely a great like blend of like what we've you know kind of been scheming on for the last couple of years. You know? So we're really excited about it, and that'll be on our EP dropping in March. Tell them what the name of the EP is. The EP is dropping in March. We're super excited about it. It's going to be six songs, six original tracks that me and Rome wrote together. And the name of the EP is going to be Cactus Cool. It's the best. It's the best. We were going back and forth for like a year, just like, you know, how about this? How about this? How about this? And then I was like, literally just out, like about to play a show. I always had my phone to my road manager right before I go on stage. And so I have it like as I'm walking up and I get a text from Duddy and he goes, this is going to be really weird. That's the one text. 
And then he says another one, but how about we name it Cactus Cool? And I was just like, I fucking love it. <laughs> it I mean, it totally captures the vibe of what we're trying to do here. We're like, yeah, diffuse these worlds and, and do it in a very kind of playful and respective way. So I, I think that name just totally, totally encapsulates that. So yes. you guys can be looking forward to that cactus cool coming out in March, but we will be dropping uh, a few singles from uh, yeah. Starting in October until the, until yeah. March when we, when the whole thing drops, we're going to be dropping a, a few more singles. So yep. you guys we'll can uh, very, yeah. very frequently, like every, every other month or so you guys will get some new singles and some new visuals and, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. You guys are going to love it. Fun. Um, let's, let's take a couple more questions, and then I got to go off to the studio. I got a session. So sublime let's with do it. From Madrano Manuel, what's the coolest gift you ever got from a fan? Oh, man. Dude, okay, off the top of my head, I haven't even thought about this in a while. But back in the day, bongs used to be, like, really awesome. Like, you know, they used to be, like, giant and elaborate. Now they're kind of, like, a little more sleek and modern and stuff, but we had this fan made us this two foot bong. No, it was like a three foot. No, it was a two footer. And it was just absolutely beautiful, man. And all the knots, it had like different albums from, from Sublime. And then like, like up top, it had like a big, like golden knot of like the, the 40 ounce sun. And then like um, the Sirens album cover. I mean, it looked like it must have took the guy like, you know, a month to make and definitely was worth thousands of dollars. He gave it to us backstage at the show. I'll never forget that. Yeah. We've been given, you know, so many cool things, a lot of art, a lot of really cool pieces of art that yeah. we've been given. Um, but the bong thing is funny. It reminds me of a, of a story of someone, same thing. And it wasn't that elaborate, you know, but it was a really nice big ass bong that someone gave us. And, uh, oh man, and this is back when we were like still in our party stage, you know, in, in a bus, but you know, party stage still. And, and it was just, uh, I'll never forget. We we got the bong and that night on the bus, everyone's partying, blah, blah, blah. Crawl on your bunk, pass out. And I just remember in the middle of the night, just hearing, oh. <laughs> no one put the bong away. Everyone was just partying and passed out. So the bong's just <laughs> sitting on a shelf. The bus driver comes and, and takes off driving. And sooner or later, that bong scoots its way to the edge and it's it so lasted true. one night. One I, just night. Want, I just want to make a disclaimer <laughs> because I've gotten this a couple of times, at, at least once a tour. Someone will, will make an offhand comment about the bong on the bus, the bus bong, and why we don't roll with those beautiful bongs. Yes. That's exactly why. That's because why. They, they break. break. They always do. Whatever. They break. You can't avoid them. They're bus bongs, you know? Yep. You're supposed to buy the ones that are replaceable. So yes. yeah. Damn. Well, we got our good friend, Bill over at golden gate glass works. Uh, every tour, he sends us a couple of these little bongs and their cup holder size yeah. bongs. So they're just little guys and they fit right into a cup holder. That's amazing. So he sends a couple of those. And then that way you don't have to worry about them sliding off. That's what you need is a cup holder bong. Cup holder bongs. Absolutely. It's good, 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 good living. Uh, what else do we got? From Ivan Reyes. What inspiration comes to mind when you guys write and think of songs? Usually it's whatever I'm feeling. You know, what like whatever I'm currently going through, that's that's kind of shaping the mood of the songs that, that I'm gonna write. Um unless I'm, you know, doing a session with somebody and and they know what kind of song they want to write. But yeah, usually I'm, I'm a product of my environment. Yeah, absolutely. Just like everyday life, you know? And then even in that moment, like where you say, like you're in a writing session and maybe you jump in and the song idea has already been kind of going, I'll kind of just try to tie it into something that has to do with something in my life I can relate to, you know? Yeah. So that when you are writing, that it feels somewhat, you know, real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's smart because you definitely hear songs that are like phoned in. Oh God, you know? most of most of the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. totally. It's nice when you hear something and you're like, "Wow, I really believe that." Yeah. Uh, shit, one more from Tim Waldrill. What was the best part of touring this summer? I got to get my kids out on the road for one day, which was awesome. So, so they they flew in at noon. And I got them like their passes and we ate catering lunch. And then by four o'clock, we got wind that uh, the, the tour was going to be uh, postponed for four days. <laughs> so we, we, we went home. 
<laughs> the, wow. the kids came and flew and hung out for four hours. Wow. And then we went home. Wow. But it was really rad because at that point we had been on the road for a while, like probably like three and a half, probably like, yeah, three and a half weeks. And um, it was just rad to like see my kids and then just go home. You know? Go so, home for a couple of days. Yeah. So, but Refresh. it was really like, you know, the yeah. most memorable part. Um, just uh, this summer tour for us, the best part was just, it was so like, easy and, and relaxing. You know, we, we've done many a tours and shows with Soja and tribal seeds yeah. and uh, you know, backstage just kind of felt like a, it was just all friends, very, very relaxing and easy going. The shows were all fun. It was just it's a very exciting, nice, dude. it was like yeah. a nice little summer camp tour. Yeah. No, that's tight. That's what's cool about having like a big bill like that too. You know, mm-hmm. it's like the, the music is like, it's, it's all day. It, or it feels like it starts at a good time. That time before, like the music starts at a show where you're just, but like you've already sound checked. That window of time is like forever. Forever. It takes, takes years. But as soon as the first band goes on, that face starts. Starts the yes. wall, like it starts to get your adrenaline going. Like I start warming up. I start like, you know, just kind of getting out of the bus and doing my yep. thing. So exactly. like, yeah, it's nice when you have like bigger kind of festival bills like that, you know, it's, yeah. it's tight. I think we're working on something actually for next summer. Um, yeah, if, if if it ends up working out, it'll be something similar to the tour that you guys just last put on. Not not with the bands, but just that 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 style of show. Yeah, it's, it's a good way. You know, it's 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 awesome. Like you know, yeah. you get to introduce a lot of new music, and then you get to just really make a full like experience. I think for the fans, totally. Sick. Yep. All right. Well, shit. shit I got right on. Yep. Do your thing. And um, yeah, thank you guys. And, and we will be back again next week. Let's do this, guys. Thank you for all support. Please don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you're at. Leave Boom. a review. It helps us out. You guys are the best. Um, could not do this without you. All right. Peace. Peace. Peace.